Hi, it's time for voiceover body shop tech talk number 30. 30? It oh, is, it's right. 30. Yes. Well, we have so many questions. It has been nuts here at the voiceover body shop. George and I have been running around like little elves trying to get everybody's studio up and running and everybody's got questions and you can send us more questions if you want in our chat room. Jeff Holman is in there. So stay tuned. It's time for VOBS Tech Talk. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars. A Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard. The voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to Voiceover Body Shop. Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, greetings there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO. BS yes. Tech Talk. <laughs> tech Talk. <laughs> tech talk. <laughs> Maybe we should run Tech Talk all this week since everybody's got all these tech questions. But uh right. yeah, it's it's been nuts. I mean, everybody is like, I gotta get my home studio together. Well, where have you been? You know, I mean, it's it's not rocket science. And if you got a closet, you know, you're saving yourself an awful lot of money right there. So, yeah. Closets can work what, pretty dang good. Yeah. What's the most interesting client you've had to work with? You don't have to mention any names, but anything weird this week with everybody, or is it just all out panic or in your world or what? I mean, some panic. Um, it's not, it's a, it's a panic because people want to feel like they're ready when they need it, but it, nobody's coming to me saying, I'm going to lose this major campaign tomorrow. Right. You know, if I don't have it, you know? So right now it's sort of a panic of, I need to have my studio up and running at home. I need to have Source Connect. I need to have whatever, IPDTL, a phone patch, da, 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 da. But it's not like the studios on the other end are fully up to speed either. And right. that the productions are not fully up to speed either. So all those productions that are normally done at the studios are, they're all, everybody is in the same boat, scrambling to get all their acts together. All the other productions that happen where the voice actor self-produces, which is what the vast majority of what voiceover really is. Yeah. You, know, you record, you edit, you process, and you send it to the client. That stuff just keeps right on going. Yeah. And, and everybody that works from home keeps right on working. Yeah. Now, I have found, you know, and the voiceover business to me, as a voice actor, I have found that in the good times, things are kind of slow. When things are bad or you're coming out of a recession or during a recession, Business is really, really good because you've mm -hmm. got companies that are retrenching, retraining. Uh, then they want to rebranding, rebranding, repromote their stuff. Suddenly commercials are being all, yeah, commercials are all being re recorded with a whole new tone. Right. Everything's a lot more solemn and, or maybe not solemn as much, but like more comforting and warm. And right. in these challenging times, that's right. You need a Jaguar. <laughs> You know, crap like that. Yes, yes. But That's what's here. going out on the air right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I've done a few of those too. For uh, you know, one for a car manufacturer, and 
It was like, we're here for you. Wouldn't a Jaguar make you feel better right now? Not really. I, who cares? I'm not driving anywhere. <laughs> Yeah, and then it's got to start, you know. It's that exactly. Don't you want to escape your horrible family and go out in the driveway and sit in your new Jaguar? <laughs> there's, there's one, there was one episode on Mad Men where this guy was trying to commit suicide because he had bought this Jaguar and lost his job. And he goes out and he tries to, you know, suffocate himself in his car. And I'm like, oh, watch this. It's not going to start. <laughs> and sure enough, the car wouldn't start. I think Jaguar has probably fixed that problem since then. And they're not. Yeah. So. Anyhow, but George <laughs> and I are here to help you with your home studio. And that's what we do. And I think most of the requests we've been getting this week is, can you listen to my audio and see if it's up to snuff? And oh, man, yeah, I mean, my broadcast quality or what? Yeah. Guys, there's no such thing as broadcast quality. I mean, if you're if you're watching, you know, Howdy um, Doody or something like that from the '50s, it's an analog standard of you know broadcast quality. It's now professional yeah. digital quality. And the fact of yeah. the matter is, is the stuff that you can do on a crappy microphone is still better than what they were doing on analog TV 50 years ago. So, right, forget that, forget that term. Sure. Um, any anywho. If you need help with I don't your... have any tech updates. Okay. Sorry, no, that's gonna... why I don't have any tech updates because we just have so much just current events that need to be sorted out and a lot, a lot, a lot of questions. And we want to answer so those I figured questions. Why... Yeah, I'm not gonna waste a lot of time on the tech news. You know, we the tech news is you need a home studio. Which we've been with telling you for, for nine years now. <laughs> uh so listen to it, Sorry, darn anyway. it. We know what we're talking about. And because we know what we're talking about, we're telling you where you can work with us if you really need help with your home studio. If you want to work with George Whittem, there's a way to do that. All you have to do is go over to georgethe.tech. That's the website. Um, there's a, um, a whole section on there. I, I call it Home VO Studio Now. And that's for people that don't have anything and they know they need a mic and they need a bunch of gear. It's just some place you can go and start clicking around and buying stuff you need. Um, but there's also tech support on there on the VO Studio Tech uh, menu. You can book support. If you're really under the gun, you can book an emergency support and I'll burn the midnight hour with you and get you, your issues sorted out. So that's all over there. Right. Dan? How about you over your website? What well, are you doing over, over at homevoiceoverstudio.com, uh, you know, I talk about what I do, but at the bottom of my page, and this has been busy, I mean, the specimen collection cup has been overflowing, which can be, you know, <laughs> that's a little bit messy, somewhat un unseemly, but, uh, <laughs> but people have really been submitting their audio. If you go there, scroll to the bottom of the page and click on the, uh, the specimen collection cup there. You can, it's a Dropbox. You can send me your MP3 audio. There's very specific instructions on how to do that. And I will analyze your audio. And if I'm like, you're up to snuff, I'm going, hey, no big problem. You might want to raise your gain a little bit. Maybe it's something like this. If there's something major, then we can talk about, you know, for perhaps a little bit more consultation on that. But go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com and do that. And we'll take care of you. Well, we got, we still have some guests with us. Yeah, we do. I, should we check in with the guest, the we, chat room? We should. Does, do any of our, our, our chat room guests who are in here with us on Zoom have a tech question for us that they would like to get across right yeah, now? Let's start with them. They're the ones here live. Right. Uh, I have one. Go, Jay Harris. So this might be, you might give me the Dan, you may give me that look, but how quiet are studio monitors supposed to be? Because um, I'm noticing a little bit more noise coming out of mine. I have the equators and they're out of business. So I don't know if they're supposed to be a little. That little sucks, bit. man. I'm sorry that they're out of business. I was really, really impressed with them. Which, sorry which, which manufacturer was that? Equator. Oh, Equator. Yeah. Equator Audio. Oh, well, yeah. we met them. Yeah. Yeah. They made some great monitors. I don't know. They just didn't stay the, they didn't stay the course for the long haul there. But when, when the monitor speakers start making, so is it sort of like a puttering? Or like a buzz. It's like a, a light buzz. A light buzz, yeah. Hmm. I've heard a lot of studio monitors do that. M Audio, KRK, anything that's powered. Some point where the monitor, you know, the amplifier might start to go uh, south. And now it's, at, there's not much you can do. I mean, you can you could send in the one monitor that's noisy to a technician, and they might be able to repair it. 
Um, like uh, there's a place in LA called Audio Rehab. Audio. And as long as it's an analog circuit, they can probably fix it, which it's an analog circuit if it's an amplifier. So right. I, I, um, ha I have know, found buzzing. What yeah. do you do? I, I have found that if, if monitors are buzzing, sometimes it's not the monitor. It could be your, your preamp uh, or it's how it's, how it's being fed or the, the XLR cable or the, the, uh, the other cable goes into your studio monitor may have a ground short in it. And is it both speakers equally that pretty much have the same noise or is one more noisy than the other? Both, both the same. See? Oh, okay. Yeah. That, that, that may be not the amplifier and the speaker then. Yeah. Don't spend. Now we're talking about a ground problem possibly. Yeah. Right. Which hmm. is much easier to fix because you just yeah. keep plugging things and changing cables until it stops. No. Yeah. And yeah. it saves you a heck of a lot of money. Why go out and buy new, new monitors? What kind of, you, you've got the equators, which are great monitors. I mean, they really do make they sound good. But when you, you know, if you're trying to listen to, like I had a friend that was recording her, she said, Jay, well, why does it sound so bad? I said, no, those are just, the, that's just the monitors. It's not your recording. Recording's clean. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The recording is clean. So, you know, use headphones in the meantime. I'll tell them while you figure that out. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, that that's a yeah. That's definitely a good question. If it was both speak, if it was one speaker being a real problem, the other one not, then that would be more the amplifier. That's that's a connectivity or ground loop issue between your your monitor system. Uh, just one more thing: Are they both are both those speakers power cords plugged into the same exact power strip or whatever as all your other stuff in your studio? No, two separate. One's going into a wall. The other one's going into a power strip. Yeah, that's a bad. That's you want to avoid that. That could be the cause of a of a ground loop buzz. Yeah. So try to reroute that other speaker so it goes to the same power strip if you can. Okay. Try that. Where else are you going to get answers like this? Damn straight. You know, I mean, anybody else got a question? I'm on the chat room. Yeah. Yeah. Get Paul. Paul there. Yeah, I'll ask. I have one. Um, okay. Right before we jumped on here, I was perusing the Facebook groups and some a talent who uh, is in New York City said. I'm trying to set up my studio for the first time and I'm told I need an interface. What is that? What do you say to somebody who has spent literally all their working life in studios and now has to start from scratch get, getting set up at home? Well, you know, we, we teach this stuff. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. George and I have lots of videos out there that explain these things. Uh, but, you know, what do you tell them? You tell them it's like, this is what allows us to do what we do on the Internet. Because it takes a good signal from a, a studio condenser microphone, which doesn't have to be really expensive, and you can put it into an interface, like, say, you know, a Focusrite Solo or a 2i2, well under $200. Someone could spend less than $400 and have a good quality digital system. Because what that interface does is it amplifies the signal, and it then converts it into the ones and zeros that your computer can understand. And yep. And then it and then it can take that that language and turn it into the waveforms we see, and we can manipulate it. That's really all it does. It's not like alchemy or something. Well, I think there's a lot of confusion too. A lot of those folks that in that category Paul's mentioning, they may have a USB mic, right? You know, they may have like an Apogee mic, and that's all they've ever needed or need because they just record auditions in their closet. So they're being told they need this thing called an interface, and they're going, "Where do I plug that in?" So that's a big confusion, right? Because the interface is something that's used with studio microphones, right? Not USB microphones. Yeah. Well, contact either one of us, and you know we can walk you through that. Although I must say, I was working with somebody over the weekend, uh, setting up a studio in her closet, and she had a an Epigee hype, and we set it up the way you know it's a standard uh, you know studio condenser mic uh, you know rules. It's that, not a bad mic. No, you know and, how to use it. And she turned it on and, you know, she had the clothes were like, you know, coming to a, you know, a corner. Yeah. So just have it there, have the mic right in front of the clothes. She started talking. I'm like, damn, that sounds great. Yeah. You know, right, right in there, you know. And can you use a hype mic if you're doing stuff remotely or an Epigee yeah, mic? Of course. Or, yeah. So. Yeah. What? As long as it, as long as it can show up in your computer, like any other audio device, the microphone is the interface. That's what's confusing. When right. you have a USB right. mic, the mic and the interface, the preamp, whatever people are calling them, it's all inside that mic. It's all inside one device. Squeezed in there. All one thing, yeah. <laughs> so you just the thing that can be tough is if you are used if you need to be directed, if you have to wear headphones, 
some USB mics don't have a headphone jack. And if you have to listen to the direction, sometimes it can be weird hearing the direction on the earbud or the phone without hearing yourself in the headphones. And that totally depends on the way you're used to working. But chances are, if you're normally the kind of person that goes into a studio, chances are you're used to listening to yourself while you're recording because that's pretty much how all the studios do it. So the hype mic can do that, right? Yeah. It's got a headphone Yeah, it's got a headphone jack on it. And it's got like you know, a mix between the computer and uh and and yep. uh, and the mic. So that it's a great little unit. And they're right here in Santa yeah, Monica. Nice. So you yeah. Know, support local business if you're here in LA. Um if you're in Des Moines, buy them anyway. <laughs> Anybody else in the chat room? Or should we move to the email uh, questions? Go for I have it. some I have a question. Jennifer Jennifer Riley. Hi. Hi. Um so I have um, an Apollo Twin uh, MK2 interface, uh -huh. um, and I just recently learned of the the whooshing issue. Whoosh. Um, so it's whooshed into your life too, huh? <laughs> it's whooshed into my life, and uh, and I was wondering if the if you've heard any news about that as to like why that's a a growing issue for people that have that. Sure. Well, <laughs> um, the news is, is that there is no news because they're not really fussing up to it in any kind of like grand way, um, okay. which is really disappointing for you folks at Universal Audio. The chances of anybody actually hearing what I'm saying right now are low, but we created a Facebook group or I created a Facebook group maybe two years ago called Universal Audio Apollo. And I recommend you go on that Facebook group and we have a whole discussion that I've pinned to the top um, about this one problem. So I recommend that you get in on that discussion so you can be an understanding of what's going on. But the short answer is, and this is Tim uh, Friedlander discovered this, I think, from uh, Soundbox LA, is, is to get an external phantom power box. It's only like a $30 little box and the microphone plugs into that. And then that plugs into the Apollo. And then you turn off the phantom power on the Apollo. So the Apollo okay. is still providing the preamp and everything else, but the phantom power is provided by that little box. That apparently has cleared up this problem for numerous people. Okay. And, and it's and this little workaround, as annoying as it is to do it, is still a better workaround than them waiting for them to get yours fixed and or replacing it and then having the problem happen again, which has been happening. I have okay. had people send them, get them replaced, repaired, getting replacements, and then it comes back again. <laughs> so, you know, that's not a good that doesn't make you warm and fuzzy to have that issue happen. So Try that little, try that simple workaround. Um, just search on, on, online, on Amazon, whatever, for a phantom power supply. Shouldn't be more than 30 bucks. Yeah. I, you know, I've got one. I think I have an old Roland that I plug in every now and again, if I, if I have to do something yeah, like that. Roland and there's all different companies that make these things. Yeah. That's what you need. You'll need an extra mic cable too, because you'll need another little mic cable that goes from the little box just a little short to one. the Apollo. So you might spend 50 bucks total for this little workaround, but it does seem to cause a uh, clean it up for a lot of people. Yeah. But okay. the yeah. Well, I actually learned about it from the Facebook group, but the last update or the last comment was from seven or eight weeks ago. So I didn't know if I missed anything. That's why I wanted to check. Well, just add your, throw your hat in the ring in terms of, because what they want people to do is to submit a ticket. Mm -hmm. And then once they've submitted a support ticket, they are asking us to accumulate the support tickets to create a, some so what I don't know a super case, I don't know what they're looking for. But class action suit, a class action <laughs> suit, because that's you know we're like we got a lot of people with this problem. Tim Tippett's has been gathering names as well because uh, he's got a lot of people with that problem. So, um, it's a huge bummer. Yeah, I mean that's an expensive interface. I mean that's it probably is. one of the most expensive of the you know the the uh, the level you know that we work yeah, at that we commonly use. Right, and it's. The expense is really for some of the things that this stuff can do on the front end that we really don't need. You know, people yeah. think, oh, it's expensive, therefore it's a better interface. It's a better interface for doing a lot of production work that we don't really do. Not to say that it's not a great interface. It just, it doesn't sound any better 
than, say, you know, a focus right 2i2. It's the same process. So sometimes it's good to have a backup around, you know, in case that's doing that. You know, use your old interface or something along those lines. You know, I'm, I think I'm going to carry a blue mic mate around with me. If someone's having a problem with their interface, oh, let's see if it's... Oh, yeah, it's the interface. Yeah, this thing really sucks, too, but... Oh, it's one working. of those little sparks? Yeah. A little super mega simple $50 USB interface that right, plugs in right. the mic? That's a great little you know, workaround. That, that immediately eliminates all the complexity of the Apollo when you plug that in. Absolutely. All righty. And if any anybody in the chat room has, you know, who's with us on Zoom has a question, uh, let, let me know. We've got a, a lot of written questions here, though. People have been submitting these all week. Uh, from Terry Parker Brown, she says, I record in a whisper room. My mic, M-I-K-E, uh, is a GT55, a Groove Tubes, Groove Tubes 55, which is a, I think, the, the Guitar Center. An older tube mic from yeah. Guitar Center, probably. Right. It's a Groove Tube. <laughs> it's a Groove Tube, yeah, yeah. I am running on the latest OS on a Mac laptop, a desktop. I have a Mackie 1402 VZLZ. The, the numbers don't really matter to us. Uh, which then runs into a Scarlet 2i2 interface. We won't mention any names, but Larry Hudson said I can ditch the Mackie, but my husband is a musician, <laughs> and this is how I've been able to set up. Thoughts? I find with all the gaming video out there, you have to scream and die. It's helpful to be able to turn it down from the Mackie. Interesting. Okay, let's answer that one first, because it's a two-parter, it looks like. Yeah. Or maybe a three-parter, actually. Yeah, but... Um... Um... Yeah, so, he's right. So the mixer is a mixer for mixing several signals together. And so if you're using a mic into the Scarlet, that's what you should be using, a mic into the Scarlet. Larry's probably right. Now, your husband has a different use case. He's doing it. He's using this system for a different need, probably plugging his guitar in or recording other instruments at the same time or doing bar gigs and needs a mixer. That's where the mixer comes in. But... um Simplify the setup, keep the signal chain as short as possible. Have the Scarlet in your booth if you need to, so you can turn the little tiny, the little gain knob up and down. And that's, that's it. Keep it simple. Really. Trust us. Yeah. And then she asks, secondly, I got Source Connect and I've been trying to test it. My computer and speaker sit on my desk and I step into the whisper room to record. I'm getting some looping. The obvious solution is to turn down the speakers. Yes? Yes. Plug your headphones into your Scarlet and turn up and turn down your speakers. Yep. That's, that is exactly the problem. Source Connect is not, I think we all get spoiled by Zoom and Skype. Those have these crazy echo canceling features built in. Right. So we can talk to grandma on their iPhone and it doesn't loop like crazy, but not everybody's going to, you know, that's, that's a, that's a feature that muddies the audio big time. They can't do that on Source Connect. You can't have this loop thing because it would screw up the audio considerably. So headphones are absolutely a requirement. Yeah. And then last connection, last question is Source Connect depends on my internet, correct? Absolutely. I live in a suburban area, but I do notice dropouts every once in a while. Will this affect my Source Connect connection? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I have an Xfinity and I'm on their best plan. Well, the thing about cable modems is they're, you're basically on a network of other cable modem users in your neighborhood. So you're kind of depending on how much people are using it in your neighborhood. Yeah. Sort of so, everybody flushing their toilet at the same time. Kind of. <laughs> yeah. When everybody is at home and they're all watching Netflix, then things get a little bit sluggish. But full on dropouts, obviously not a good thing. Make sure you're plugged in from your computer to the router with an Ethernet cable. And those should those kind of dropouts should be reduced quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, we have another uh, spousal situation here. Why don't you read this? Uh oh <laughs> From Tricia? Lovering. Is that the one? Yes. Lovering. Um, I use our spare laptop to record in the closet, but sometimes my husband takes it to work. I was thinking of using my iPad with an XLR mic. I can send the recorded track to my desktop in the loft to edit. I tried the lightning to USB camera adapter and it did not work. I've been given various recommendations. Sure, MVI, iRig Pro, MicPort Pro 2. Sweetwater recommended the Isotope Spire Studio. They always recommend the most expensive of choice. Of course. Kind of funny how that works. Don't ask them. <laughs> ask a company that makes a profit on selling gear. Which one should I buy? <laughs> um, what would you recommend to do the voiceover into the iPad with an XLR? Um, the, the you didn't F say what mic it is i don't know what mic it is 
The Shure MVI is pretty damn dead simple. The Micport Pro 2 is fantastic. That's the best quality of the whole lot. Yeah. Um, it's not the cheapest, but it certainly sounds really good. So I would go between either that, the Shure MVI or the Micport Pro 2, honestly. Yeah. Micport Pro 2 is really a better product. So if you have the budget, I'd go with that one. Um, cause it has a battery inside and that helps the fan and power and everything else work more efficiently and work better. Whereas know. the MVI doesn't. So that, that would be my choice. Yeah. Dan, have you used any of those? You use the mic port pro too. I've, yeah, I've got the, I, I, I think I have one here. Well, it's actually the mixer face. that I have. Here. The mixer face, which is like it's grandfather or it's, you know, the big brother. Yeah. This is, you know, it, um, it's very simple. It's just, just as good as any other interface, but it's a lot more mobile. Got to charge it. Powered. You got to yeah. charge it. It's actually yeah, on the charger right now, so it can yeah. it can be used. I don't, not that I'm using right. it for anything, but uh, right. anyway. But yeah, it's there are some really good small units out there that that work like that. Uh, just don't get something that is meant for something else. Uh, you know, like like the, the, there you were mentioning the the uh, Isotope Spire Studio. I remember we did a feature on that when we were at NAM a couple of years ago. And it was an interesting unit, but for voiceover, it really is designed for creative people making music yeah i haven't gotten a chance to test it in a real voiceover world situation i've seen a name pop up occasionally from other people online but it's not 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 at all the really the right thing it does many things you don't need and it's overpriced for what it is you don't need something like that complicated absolutely well, tell you what we're going to do right now. We're going to take a break. Break time. Because we got to rest. And I got to get a bottle of water or something. But we've been running at this and getting all these answers out to you because you come to the right place if you want the right answers for your home voiceover studio. Talk about a niche that we have. I mean, come on now. Anyway, we'll be right back here on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're listening to Voice Over Body Shop, VOBS.TV. Breaking news. As of today, Amazon and BSW have sold out of Porta Booth Pluses. Now, Amazon still has a few pros in stock. But if you want a Porta Booth Plus, VoiceOverEssentials.com is the only game in town. They have a good stock of both booths right now and are shipping a lot faster than Amazon. That's right, get the most popular mobile studio out there. The Portabooth Plus makes recording on the road easy peasy. It assembles in seconds and allows you to kick out those inconvenient auditions wherever you are. Get one now at voiceoveressentials.com, the home of all Harlan Hogan signature products, like the VO1A microphone that you're hearing right now with perfect mic technique and Harlan Hogan signature series headphones. Go there now voiceoveressentials.com. Thanks for being our sponsor for nine years, Harlan. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, cause I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves, but I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. And we're back here on Voice Over Body Shop Tech Talk. You know, this week, George... I, I experienced the Catalina Audacity thing. I hadn't really used Audacity in a while, but I had a client that needed to learn something, and I'm like, Come here, it yeah. won't record. And then I'm like, okay, what do you see? Don't if you need to learn something, just type it, you know, in this in a Google search, and it's like, <laughs> why won't Audacity record? And you'll find YouTube videos, and this guy's like, okay, yeah, just go into 
get a terminal, you know, just be careful what you type in there, but put this line of code in there, click it, and it turns out just accept the mic. They just haven't gotten that that patch through yet. And oh, they don't have that little handshake with the Mac that pops up that annoying little window saying, are we going to allow the microphone to connect to the computer kind of thing? Right. right. It, you have to go have through to terminal. Go into the hood. Happen. Yeah. So uh, good, to know. good to know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, just Google it and, and don't be afraid by it. Uh, let's see. We've got a question here from Max Reed. He says, first, thank you so much for being a great resource for us scrambling voice actors, especially now. Second, I love to ask a question on your show that goes like this. Uh, I'm operating out of a small closet in an apartment bedroom, 10 foot ceiling, 30 inches deep, 55 inches long. Good size. It's, is it better to try expand the closet outward with a false insulated wall? Or am I better off somehow treating the two large windows approximately three feet away from my closet? I have an extra two, two, by feet, two by five feet outside my closet to play with, though most of my noise is coming from outside. My space feels very close to otherwise being very broadcast quality. <laughs> Again, that term. You know, so he's in a closet in an apartment bedroom, so he's not going to be doing a lot of construction in that place. No, you're not going to be able to do that. And the thing is, don't overthink this. Uh, the only way to tell is for us to hear it. You know, and, and if, if it sounds, we say at the end of every show, if it sounds good, it is good. Uh, I think people are like, well, it could always be better. Well, yeah, if you're getting noise, if you're doing 30 second auditions, it's not a big deal. You know, a truck goes yeah. by. Okay. Edit that out. Go back at it. You know, it's annoying and stuff like that, but you're working out of a home studio. If you're trying to do remote work, that's a whole nother deal. That's, you know, because that can be an interference. However, I would hope that these guys who are now, you know, these studios that are like demanding people do things remotely understand that not everybody has a whisper room or a studio bricks. Exactly. They're in a closet exactly. and that they're going to have to be patient. It's just part of this transition. Yeah. I think they're going to be a little understanding if a session is occasionally interrupted by a, a noise. Right. I mean, just refer to fill in the name celebrity who hosts a giant TV show and makes $20 million a year name and say, watch, <laughs> I heard their kids and their dog barking. So you're going to give me a break or what? <laughs> Cause that stuff's happening right now, you know? So don't be super concerned, but to answer the question, I guess if the noise really is coming through those two large windows, um, if that really is the noise source and you can't seal off the closet better, there are ways to seal off the windows temporarily. Um, it's quite costly to do it well, but there's a company called Indos that makes cert inserts to make your windows way quieter. Right. And it's basically windows without the W. Right. Um, it's quite costly, but man, they work really well. So if you're desperate, that's something you can try. Right. All right. I believe Mr. Stefano has a question for us. Paul? Yeah, that guy never shuts up. Um, <laughs> question related to one of the write-in ones a couple of minutes ago about bandwidth. I've noticed since the whole family is here during this uh, coronavirus situation that when I'm doing a session connected to either Source Connect or another, another service that my son's playing Fortnite is sucking some of the bandwidth away. Yeah, I think. Now, yeah. <laughs> Here's my question, though. It's, it seems to be worse with the power line adapters. So I'm using a couple of power line Ethernet adapters, one for the studio and one in my son's room, and they have less speed even by themselves than the wireless. Can you think about, can you tell me or think why that might happen? Where uh, I think my, my plan is 200 200 with Fios, uh, download speed and upload megabits per second, which is great. Lucky, yeah. Wireless is there. But on the, the power line Ethernet adapters, both of the ones that we have plugged in are only averaging around 60. That's Any because they're, they're power line Ethernet adapters. You're taking your signal and you're really stretching it out there into a system that was not really designed to do that. Yeah, I've had varying success with them, but I have a very similar situation, Paul. Well, I don't have kids sharing my Internet connection right now, so I don't have that problem. But... I have used power line Ethernet adapters in my own place. And now I'm just using Wi Fi because, in my situation, the Wi Fi is faster. And um, I'm the only one using it most of the time. And there's, I'm not crowded in an apartment building. So, in, our, in my particular use case, the Wi Fi 
has proven to be really reliable. Um, I'm doing the show on Wi-Fi right now. Now, will so, the power line be more stable? It should or, be more stable because it's a physical connection, but it maxes yeah, out the speed. Do. The speed maxes out. But if you're getting 60 meg a second on speed test on the power line adapter and you're having dropouts while using that on Source Connect, I'm not sure if the power line Ethernet adapter is the cause of it. Okay. But they're pretty tough to troubleshoot. I mean, they pretty much work or they don't. And um, sometimes they get pretty slow. So <laughs> I wish I had a better answer. I just found that in my case, I stopped using them. But yeah, I recommend them all the time to people because I can't guarantee their Wi-Fi network is going to be super stable, especially in an apartment building. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All righty. Yeah, uh, Victor Clark asks, what about us PC guys? Should we just keep using Levelator? I heard something about Levelator going away. Did you? Well, it was in the, it was in the spot for, uh, our, our friend, uh, David. Oh, the, uh, cake. Bio the, Heroes. The, yeah. The, cake, audio cupcake. The yeah. cupcake thing. So, yeah. So that's what came out uh, as a replacement for Levelator. Right. Um, check it out. Yeah, I ha I can't vouch for it. I haven't used it yet. But. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure it works fine. I, you know, I, then again, and you know me, George. I'm like everything is physical, everything is technique, and not to rely on the technology. People are like, well, it's got to be even. So I want something that's going to make. I know for audiobooks, it's pretty important. Uh, audiobooks and like, yes, maybe podcasts. Yeah, but for, for just for, trying to get everything as loud as you can consistently without overmodulating, yeah, and that's and, level layer, and keep, yeah. And yeah, and that's that's what it's for. Um, you know, I I always believe you know record raw, do everything in post and stuff, and uh, but you know the, the, when you do those sorts of things, you are you're Black not box. It's, it's not natural. We don't have a levelator when we're talking to other human beings. Yeah, I don't. I, I I hate that thing because it's a black box, right. aka something goes in, something comes out. God knows what happens on the inside. That's a black box. Yeah, and so I just hate it for that reason. But if it's fulfilling your need and your client's need, then whatever. I don't care as long as it just keeps doing its job. If it sounds good, it is good. Don't worry about it. That, that's right. Yeah. So you know, try not using it, Vic. Let's see what happens. You know, yeah. we'll, maybe they'll, someone will come up with something else. Uh, yeah. I'll let you do Maria Marcus's question because I know your answer to this. Oh yeah. Uh, I have a PC and I'm in the process of signing on for source connect standard. Am I in serious trouble for not having a Mac? I can't afford a Mac right now. Um, so it does run fine, um, on windows where people are having a lot of problems. Sorry for rubbing my eyes so much on, on the show. Don't That's touch your face. Did you wash your hands? I haven't left my house in three days. Okay, so man, you're too. probably fine. Um, <laughs> um, I have a PC. Okay, so if you're on Windows, it, Source Connect seems to work just fine on Windows. It's when you're trying to record in Audacity or some other program where we often have conflicts. So if you just use Source Connect on your Windows machine, you're probably okay. It, everybody I've set it up with lately it seems to work just fine. Yeah. So I, don't offer to record it back up and you'll be okay. It'll work on its own. Quit nope. everything else and just run Source Connect. I thought you would say, you know, you can get a used Mac. Well, when they say I can't afford a Mac right now, what does that mean? I can't afford $2,000 or I can't afford $300, right? I don't know what she's exactly referring to, but right. you can buy a six or seven-year-old Mac mini for three or 400 bucks that'll run source connect all day long without any problems. So you can, you can, you can Mac your way out of that problem for not a terrible amount of money and use the Mac for that as a, as you use it as an appliance. This is a used Mac. Yeah. It's used Mac. Is the best yeah. And used Macs are a great deal. They tend to run for a really long time. And so that really at the end of the day is going to be your long haul best solution. But I know right now it's maybe the learning curve and the expense is intimidating. So it will run on Source Connect on Windows. Just don't try recording anything while you're on a Source Connect session until further notice, until I found the right combination of 
features to do that. Because I've asked people out there who, who have done that successfully how to do it consistently, and I haven't gotten a lot of good answers. Yeah. So. Uh, Cheryl Ann Voice says, any way to get pops or S's out after recorded through mastering? Boy, I love, I love how people throw terminology around. Um, and, of course, my philosophy is we'll avoid the S's and the pops in the first place. You'll notice I can say Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle peppers all day long using this Harlan Hogan VO1A microphone. And you're not going to hear a single pop out of this. I don't, you know, I don't even use a pop screen. I don't use a pop screen you know, in my studio anymore because it's not a matter of trying to remove stuff after you've made the mistake of using the mic wrong. It's the technique of using the mic properly. And that is you want the mic to be at eye level, the top, you know, upside down, at eye level, your copy behind you like this. And that allows you, one, room to move your hands. It gives you a clear view of your copy. But more importantly, it's picking up your voice at the same plane as everybody else's ears at that distance. And it sounds like you, whereas a lot of people think that this is what voiceover is supposed to be. And it's not. It's supposed to be, if you go into a recording studio, they don't shove that thing in front of your face. It's up there. And the you, you've got a, a a lectern there, and that's where your copy is. So don't don't think that you know th th there's a way to get rid of it afterwards. The way to get rid of it is to not do it in the first place. And sibilance is an issue. George, what's the best way to deal with sibilance that you've found? I mean, mic placement helps. Um, speaking a little bit more across the mic instead of direct down the middle of it can reduce sibilance. Um, proper EQ. In software, you can just set a specific a specific EQ to reduce that sibilance range. It's between like six and seven thousand hertz and twelve thousand hertz, the top frequency range. So those are a few little tricks that that I'll use. Some people even use an actual deesser application, like a plugin. Right. Um, some of them are great, and some of them are awful. Right. There's one in Adobe Audition that you know you can adjust the the it works width. Well. Of that, yeah, I've used that. It works okay. Yeah, I but, put it on. I put it on broadband mode. Yeah, not multi-band mode. And right. yeah, it seems to work okay. Yeah. So, but then again, it might be a matter of mic technique. I've also found with sibilance, learn to relax your tongue. Uh, people tend to overemphasize certain syllables and letters like like that. Relax your tongue and don't think about it. Talk the way we all talk, because we don't talk like this. Right. That's usually what causes sibilance. A lot of it's technique. Absolutely. Uh, you want to take this one from Joe Tarantowski? Sure, be happy to. From Joe Tarantowski, we got... Oof, they are coming in still. <laughs> Try to keep this fast. Um, I've been playing with old gear, compressors, EQs, etc. Is it okay to plug in the quarter-inch tip ring sleeve out into the quarter-inch line in on my interface? Um, I'll pass on that one. <laughs> it's just, I don't get why, what the context is. Well, I think he's it's, using it's, some old basically, panel. is it okay to have a loop connecting out to in? Okay, to plug the quarter inch. I do that. Out of the quarter line into my what computer. for? I do it to record the incoming signal from a, from a remote session. So actually the source connect works really well that way. I just loop out from the stereo out with a mono cable and back into the channel two on the AGO six, and I can record anything coming in. Oh, I see. Use it to record what's coming back. Sure. Right. Yeah. For podcasting, that's brilliant. Yeah. Also for, for sessions though. So if I want to have a backup where I can hear the direction too, just for, for posterity, then I can yeah. record everything coming in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. O old, old gear though is it, you know, if you're an audio geek, if you're really into, you know, th that, that classic sound, I mean, I've, I'm surrounded by old radios here, and I love playing with those and having fun with those and the way they sound, but that's not the sound they're looking for today. And these old compressors, again, if you record on the front end using a compressor, it's there forever. You can't take it back out, which is why it's important to record fresh and raw up front. Then if you want to mess around with it, then you can do things. There's so much software out there that does the same thing. And some people, it doesn't sound as mellow. Well, they ain't looking for mellow. <laughs> I right. don't understand that one. They're not looking for an AM radio from the 70s sound. That's right. <laughs> and it's 20 degrees here in the city. We've got lots of coming. Yeah. 
All right. Moving on. A lot of questions. Terry Parker Brown. I'm on my trial for Source Connect. I matched my audio options to yours in the Source Connect, uh, Source Connect standard window. My window says port not mapped. Is this something I need to address or does it, doesn't it matter if I'm only sending, not receiving? <laughs> you are receiving because you're receiving the audio from the other guy who's directing you. Right. So it does matter if it doesn't work. So in other words, you don't always have to port map because it doesn't, sometimes it works without worrying, without having to do it. It just totally depends on your, on your router and your network, how that's going to behave and how it's going to work. So it's a total crapshoot. Yeah. But you may be fine without port mapping. Um, it's just, it's a best practices thing. Just like connecting the computer with ethernet is a best practice for source connect. Having that port mapped is also a best practice for Source Connect. So we recommend if you can, get it done, have them do it, have one of us do it. I do it routinely for people um, and we'll get it set up for you. Right. Uh, Victor Clark asks, here's a question, since we asked for questions. If someone made you an effects preset, we won't mention any names, uh, do you use that, that across the board? Or how do you know what genres or types of clients want that versus unprocessed versus something else specific like Levelator for audiobooks? Ask, ask, <laughs> ask, yeah. ask the client. Do you want me to do anything? No, we want it raw. Okay, then take all that stuff you were just talking about and don't use it. Right. You know. And the or thing is, it, go ahead. Or if they, if you do process your audition, and they go, we want it to sound just like that, then whatever you did on the audition, you're gonna do it on the the actual job. So, yeah, yeah it just depends on the client what they want. Yeah. And, and I always say, if you don't know what something does or how it does it, don't use it. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, here's one from a dear old friend of ours, uh, Diane Costello Merritt. I just, I have a weird question. We would expect nothing less from you, Diane. <laughs> um, after printing a script and I start recording, I see a line in my recording. But when I've not used my printer, there's no line. A line in Whoa. Your okay that is weird a line could you be a little more specific there i'm not quite i'm sure. gonna interpret what that means which is when i hit my room tone looks higher on the on the waveform ah that's what i'm interpreting that to mean so i'm i'm guessing that when the printer finishes printing because it's probably a laser printer mm -hmm. the laser printer is still running because it's like in standby mode you know right and then so when it's running there's a little bit of noise on the line from the from the printer because those i have a laser printer they use a lot of power when they're running so um and then i think once the thing goes to sleep it probably goes away try printing it and then shutting off the printer diane just power it off see if that goes away absolutely just a wild guess all righty uh colin mooney asks hi george and dan when recording at minus six to minus nine as you recommend the noise floor is around minus 55 or so with the gtt stack and my apollo twin it's minus 60 without the rack. What's the best fix process to lower and post? Find out Sacks, what the noise racks. is and get rid of it. Stacks, racks, oh my. So he, what he's saying is that when he has the UAD processing preset I've set up for him turned on, the noise floor goes up. And that's probably because that, that effects chain is increasing the gain. So the processing in that chain is designed to increase the level and give you a higher, louder output for doing you know specific kind of work where you need that loud output. So, so another way to work around that is to add an expander into that chain, which will then lower the noise floor a bit. If it's set up correctly, it works really, really well. But um, if you want to do it in post, an expander can be used as a plugin in your DAW of choice, and I can set that up for you. Right. You know where to find me, georgethetech.com. All right. I'm going to let you read the last questions, and then you're going to know my reaction to this. Okay, great. <laughs> and we got to wrap it up to this, man, because I'm absolutely legitimately running out of steam. Okay, going, good. It's our last time. question. Sound guy says uh, Levelator was no, designed no, no, to that, prep. No, not that one. Not, he was just talking about what Levelator is. Oh, okay. Sarah cool. Kramer. Um, Sarah says, the DBX286S has been recommended to me for directed home studio sessions to help with my sibilance and reduce the amount of room tone so the or room noise so the clients won't hear it. Normally, I would fix this stuff before I send the audio. I would do it in post. Um, is there another option that will help with the same issues? Yes. So, 
I yeah, I'm I'm kind of flabbergasted that you're being told to use something like that when the producer's job is to do that stuff. Right. But otherwise, don't worry about it. If you're talking about Source Connect sessions, trust me, the guy engineering your session on Source Connect wants to do that, not you. Yeah. But if if you're doing it because you have to do it to get away with it because your studio is just too noisy, we got to talk about why your studio is too noisy. What is it that's going on that you have to do it to get acceptable audio? Um, it, yes, there's a many different ways to deal with this problem, but and the DBX two eighty six is uh, is a band aid fix that can be acceptably useful. Yeah, for the money, it's pretty cheap and it generally works okay. But um, it's a front it's end a -aid processor, fix. though. Yeah, and and the thing is, is the DBX two eighty six S really is not designed for front end recording. It's really designed for live broadcasting. Uh, yeah, podcasting and, and broadcast. Right, yeah, it's it's for that kind of stuff. So whoever recommended that to you, I mean, we hear this all the time that people say, "Oh yeah, use a DBA. That really fixes my audio." Well, you know, we're we're into well, the fixes next. it and or destroys it. Yeah, Depending and yeah, if you don't know how to use it, a fix you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Well, gosh, George, we got through all of these questions. We did. Boy, and this has been exciting, and it's great, and it's great having our our friends here who have been joining us on Source Connect too, uh, jumping in and asking their questions. I'm going to unmute all the mics and have everybody say goodbye all at the same time. Yeah. Ready? Go. Here we go. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> that didn't work. No. Oh well. <laughs> it doesn't work. You can't literally do that. <laughs> it just doesn't work. Well, we know they're there. That's that's what's important. We really appreciate Thanks, them jumping by. All righty. George and I will be right back to wrap this up right after these incredibly important messages. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services, while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. So, Levelator. It did a great job of RMS normalization for audiobook content and podcast episodes. But it's orphaned software, which means no one's developing it anymore. And now it doesn't work with the latest Macs and Catalina Mac OS. So you're stuck, right? Well, not anymore. Behold the gooey goodness of Audio Cupcake. Visit audiocupcake.com and download the free Audio Cupcake app for Macintosh. Audio Cupcake does exactly what Levelator did so well for so long. It applies RMS normalization to your audio, 
and it preps your work for ACX. And it does it so well with Mac OS, including Catalina. Just like with Levelator, you drag and drop your audio file onto the Audio Cupcake window, and out pops an RMS normalized file. But Audio Cupcake goes even further. Unlock the premium features of Audio Cupcake, and what pops out? Audio that is both RMS and peak normalized, and converted to a 192K mono MP3 file ready for uploading to ACX or your podcast platform. That's delicious audio goodness. Audio Cupcake is available free at audiocupcake.com. That's audiocupcake.com. Audio Cupcake, a beautiful, simple way to master your audio narration and podcasts. You're on. All right. Sorry. <laughs> I'm looking at the wrong screen going, where, where am I? Q George. Source Connect. You really all, you guys already know what you need to know at this point, I think, don't you? Well, but if you don't, Source Connect is a software for connecting your studio to other studios around the world. It's under incredible demand lately. If you're a voice actor who is used to working in commercial studios, who's now thrust into having a home studio, this is the era. This is really the thing that everybody's saying you got to have. Um, so you really want to make sure you have your Source Connect chops ready to go. The good news is you don't have to buy it up front. You just have to have the account set up, the iLock account set up, have all that stuff ready to go and have your demo up and running. So you'll know how it works. You'll feel comfortable using it. And uh, better still, you can even get certified once you sign up for having Source Connect to show that you are a certified studio. You, you've proven to the Source Connect company, the Source Elements company, their technicians that your gear is set up correctly and you know what you're doing. That shows your clients, your potential clients and others that you have your act together. So I recommend that highly. And if you want to really get in a background on Source Connect standard and really, really understand it, go to, go to YouTube. Go to my George the Tech YouTube channel, and there's a Source Connect tutorial, Source Connect standard tutorial for voiceover video. Give it a shot. Give it a look. Understand it better, and don't feel intimidated when you're being told to get it. Okay, that's it. Thank you, Source Elements. You guys are amazing. We'll be right back to wrap it up right after this. Watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. And we are back. Wow. Lots of information there for people to soak up. In information avalanche. Really? You know, anyway. Um, next week on this very show, we will have another great guest. We, we, can, we can get access to all sorts of people since no one's going anywhere. You know, True. So, I mean, we can, you know, see if we can, we can get, uh, Tom, you know, Tom Hanks on and say, Tom, you know, you're, you're not going anywhere. Are you <laughs> feeling any better? Anyway. Right. Um, our donors of the, can I do donors of the week this week? Please. Okay. Uh, these people have done a, a wonderful thing and they have donated to our show to keep this technical magnificence that you see tonight. This was, this was a monster tonight. Uh, guys like Tim Morgenthaler, Philip Sapir, Trey Mosley. Trey, how you doing? The lovely Shelly Avellino, the even lovelier, well, she's just as lovely. They're both wonderful. Natasha Marchevka, George's dad, George Sr., Joe Lewis, uh, Brandon Hernsberger, Patty Gibbons, Alan Bremer, Diana Birdsall, Uncle Roy, Martha Kahn, Mike Gordon, thank you guys. You can donate to our show. Uh, go to our homepage. There's a big button that says donate now and you can subscribe and you can give us a buck a month and give us 10 bucks a month. You could give us a hundred bucks a month, but you know, only if you really want to. Uh, but we really appreciate that. Uh, hey, show us your booths. We have this magnificent news set tonight. Sort of reminds me when we went to visit uh, Dave Crevassier at the uh, <laughs> at KLAS in Las Vegas when he was the news anchor there. It's like, well, nice studio. Anyway, but we'd like to see what your studios look like. Send them to us. Uh, take a good picture with your iPhone, but do it in landscape, not portrait. This is not Twitter. This is 
This is voiceover body shop. And send them to the guys at vobs.tv. Uh, remember, if you want to work with George, where do you go? You go to georgethe.tech. That's my website. All the services are there. And contact us if you're having a query that doesn't seem to fit the website. Let us know what we can do for you. All right. And uh, if you want to work with me, go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com uh, and s you know, toss me some audio in my specimen collection cup and let's take a listen to how you're doing. Um, hey, you know, if you're watching this live, be sure to check out Jeff Holman as the Mater D on Better Things on FX on Thursday, April 2nd at 7 p.m. Right on, Jeff. Pacific time. All right. All right. That's awesome. Boy, have I been doing a lot of binge watching. You know, it's, you know, but then, you know, there's stuff like Outlander and, and Homeland, which, you know, is the middle of the season. You got to like wait till Sunday like we used to. My girlfriend had me start watching The Good Place. Oh. That's pretty trippy, man. I, it's a it's a great <laughs> show. It's just wonderful. <laughs> We need to thank our sponsors, like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. Oh, man, I wasn't looking at that screen. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> That's not your fault. No, it isn't. It's the end of the show, uh, Space Out Time. Uh, VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And JMC Demos. All righty. Also, the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the Betterment of Live Webcasting and Recorded Webcasting. Uh, Jeff Holman, who is, is in Better Things, uh, for running our chat room tonight. Sue Merlino for doing a bang-up job from her own house. That's right. We're, we, we, can't, we can't all be together. You know, we, we like our group hugs, but not tonight. So, uh so she was able to do this remotely, and she did a great job. And, uh, and of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us for Tech Talk. Uh, you know something? This is a tough business. You've got to learn how to do it right. There, the demand for a home studio is even more now. So tune in to us, check us out, and, and we'll make sure that when it sounds good, you'll know it is good. All righty. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George the Tech. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS Tech Talk. Tech Talk. We'll see you next week. Stay healthy. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. <laughs>